I happened to be interviewing Paul Abbott because I was working for a newspaper at the time and um, they sent me to interview him. I, you know, being an opportunist, so <laughs> wannabe TV writer, said, oh, you know, will you read this script? And um, I don't know if he read it or not, but luckily he passed it on to Nicola Schindler at Red. She did read it, or somebody at Red read it, and they sort of miraculously gave me the opportunity to pitch for series two of Clocking Off, because Paul wasn't going to write the whole series. So I, I thought, well, this is an amazing opportunity, you know. I was so determined to get a job on it that I did storylines for three separate episodes, and they really liked two of them, to my amazement. So my first original idea was a show called The Stretford Wives. It was kind of based around three sisters, and it was, it was sort of loosely based on some people I knew, um, a particular place in Manchester, a particular world, and it was something I felt very comfortable writing. I think at that time, to do an original piece like that was kind of amazing. And to get it made, you know, one of the, f the first things I had on television really after clocking off. For the first series, I probably had about 10 or 12 ideas kicking around with Red that, I, that were sort of like single plays really in a way. They were kind of like, well, how do you tell these stories? So a bit like we'd done on clocking off, uh, we developed a way of, you know, a, a sort of an umbrella under which you could tell these stories. Unlike Clocking Off, where you could kind of tell any story you wanted, the, you know, the stories in Ordinary Lies obviously had to have a secret or a lie in there somewhere. But sometimes that lie was very small, or sometimes you, know, you didn't realise what the lie was until the end, or something like that, you know. So it was quite a, 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 an elastic format, in a way, to tell stories just about ordinary people who get themselves muddled up in sort of quite extraordinary situations that particular week. It is, it is very disappointing when you've spent, you know, months working on something and then it just goes. But I, I, I've had enough time in this business now to know that unless it is something that is incredibly time specific, so just something that has to be told at this moment, nothing ever really dies. You know, I've had projects that are, have, have been rejected here and then months or years later, they've come back to life for a different reason or in a different format or in a different channel you know so nothing's ever truly wasted and you know you sometimes it's just about finding its right time i think most of success is to do with perseverance really i think you know and you can have all the talent you want but you've got to keep on trying and i think so much of everybody's a writing career is like hard graft in terms of not the writing necessarily but in terms of pitching and trying to get it made and you, you know all the stuff around the writing just that kind of that, that is needed the energy and perseverance that's needed to keep getting up after the disappointments you know to keep dealing with difficult notes I think you've got to have that strength otherwise you're never going to make it in this business it's, it's a tough industry and I think you've got to have that perseverance to to just keep to keep going.